Uh, this is important stuff to talk about what's coming down the, the pipeline for this coming year. So Janelle is going to work with me. Um, there are some embedded videos. We have not actually tested to see whether these videos will play sound. If not, we'll pause and we'll just do it the old-fashioned manual way. But let's get going. So, click both clickers. So RI theme and district goals. So what I wanted to do first was give a little bit of an update about who I am. I do know quite a number of you in the audience, but there are also a great number of you that I've never met before. And for that I apologize, and I will make amends during the coming year. I want to tell you a little bit about me, and I'll start right here with my wife, Christina. I'm married to Christina, as is quite evident from this photo. Uh, and we've been married for 28 years. And can I just say that every day I thank my lucky stars that I met this lady uh, because, quite honestly, I would not be where I am today without her, so. Go on, stand up, stand up. <laughs> Honestly, so much about my preparation for uh, the upcoming role I could not have done without uh, the support of Christina, and I thank you so much for that. Um, quite honestly, it would have been an absolute shambles without her. Uh, some of you may think it still is an absolute shambles, but that's another question. So, thanks for everything you've done, teens. I really, really appreciate you. Um, and both of us are looking forward to the opportunity to travel our very diverse and wonderful district and meet all of you in your home communities. So, our first convention was in Malmo at the end of my year as president. That was back in 2006. We were just little kids back then. Um, this photograph was uh, found as one of the first, or either one or two photographs that I ever posted on Facebook. This new thing called Facebook that somebody said you should buy some shares, and I was like, that can't possibly go anywhere. Uh, no, no, I'm fine with decisions. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a great ride since then. Um, we own a company in Cayman, it's called Massive Equipment. I know I'll get fined by the sergeant for advertising, but anyway, so be it. Um, we started um, our company 25 years ago this year, and we're now 40 staff. Um, and it just keeps us busy and excited all day long. Oh, I've gone too far. Jamaica. So, rum. I like rum. <laughs> and when I travel, I will be packing sort of little, uh, you know, bubble wrap packages. So I look forward to a fantastic collection of rums at the end of the year. <laughs> um, I kind of enjoy sports. Um, yeah. That last one was taken uh, with DG Deborah in Cayman Brack at the Rotary uh, Fitness course, and that was about the extent of my fitness course that day. Uh, my number one passion, though, is spin cycling. Um, if you follow me on my personal Instagram as opposed to the Rotary one, you will be subjected to a lot of pictures of me at ride class. So uh, we have two kids that hopefully one day will be Rotarians. But they are now quite a bit older, and um, when our son has just finished up with the university uh, a year and a half, two years ago, has his own business doing videography, and our daughter is just uh, wrapping up her education degree in the UK. Sometimes I dress up. <laughs> Take that for what you will. Uh, typically it's for a rotary cause, um, and uh, we have fun with it. And I love rotary. I, uh, I love all things about Rotary. Um, I've been like you, I've been through journeys in Rotary where there's been times that I've been really into it, there's been times that I've been rather flat with it. My advice to you is always to stay with it because these things do go around and it is such a terrific organization doing such amazing work in the world. And I also love Rotaract. Where's my Rotaractors? Woo! Okay, you. <laughs> well done, you. <laughs> Oh, that's so great. <laughs> um, I love the middle picture here. Yeah, there you are, the you're here in the middle picture. And uh, the middle picture is fantastic, because that's uh, President Shack of the Rotaract Club of Grand Cayman at our home just a few months ago with uh, President Jennifer. Um, admittedly, both of us were kneeling, but not by that much. He's a pretty tall guy. And most of all, as I mentioned before, we can't wait to work with our district and to travel our district and represent you on the international stage for Rotary in the coming year. So what I want to do now is play a short video. Um, 
as you've gathered already the theme create hope in the world the goal is to restore hope it's to help the world heal from destructive conflicts and in turn to help achieve lasting change in ourselves gordon at the international assembly talked about a number of issues around mental health was a, a primary one peace building conflict resolution but what I would like to do, if you'd indulge me for just about a minute or two, is just show you a quick video from Gordon, and this is where we're going to test to see if the sound works. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go back on that, pause it. I do apologize. I also apologize for that. Uh, I do apologize for the lack of sound um, through the main, but what you found out through this exercise is an unsung fact about our incoming President Gordon is that he is an expert, and I mean absolute expert ventriloquist. <laughs> I'm here every Tuesday morning, folks. Tip your waitress at the door. Um, so, let me just uh, get back on track on this one. So, President Gordon at the um, International Assembly talked about a woman that he met in Bai Thang Chang in Thailand, where Rotary members had helped build houses, a meeting hall, and childcare and healthcare facilities following the tsunami that devastated that area in 2004. The lady that he met there had 
lost her husband, her daughter, her son to the tsunami. And she had also lost her livelihood, of course. But she had a gift to offer McAnally. It was a beautiful seashell. He had this at the International Assembly and showed it to us at the time. It was the only possession of some significance that the lady thought was appropriate to give as a gift of thanks for what Rotary had done in her community over the last couple of years. She went on to tell him that Rotary had restored her optimism and it gave her hope. The seashell then became the basis of the RI logo that you see for 23-24. As I mentioned earlier, two main themes are coming out through Rotary's year with Gordon. Promoting peace is the first one. Significant way to bring hope, as he mentioned, to the communities that you live in is to emphasize peace and conflict resolution. In his words, peace is the soil where hope takes root. He emphasizes that the power of continuity, he called for Rotary members to continue to work with past leaders, including the Empowering Girls Initiative that was launched by RI President Shekhar Mehta in 21-22. And he also wants to place a continued emphasis on diversity, equity, and inclusion throughout Rotary. The other key area really hit home for me because before this theme was announced, and keep in mind, even as district governor elects, until you're at IA and in that moment, you do not know what the incoming theme is or what the focus areas are going to be. But I've already decided that the area of mental health, mental wellness was going to be my area of focus due to some uh, unfortunate uh, incidents that had happened in our home country, and I know this happened throughout the district. It was amazing to hear that this was an area of focus that Gordon was going to be placing in the coming year. So I'll spend a, quite a bit more time on this tomorrow in the program, but this is an area that's really close to my heart, and I really am excited during the coming year to raise the eye level on the issues of mental health and mental wellness as we travel throughout the Caribbean. We will not have all the answers. We don't profess to even begin to scratch the surface of the answers, but what I want to do is to start a conversation and to have you and your clubs in your district start a conversation that may never have been had from a podium such as this. Through COVID, some of us lost family members. Many more found that their social network had been uprooted and changed. Young people especially had their educational and developmental paths interrupted, adjusted. As a result, more people around the world, certainly more people in our district are facing mental health issues. Seeking assistance is often perceived as a sign of weakness. Absolutely nothing could be further from the truth. Reaching out for help is courageous, and continuing on a path of wellness is even more so. Rotary is going to work to improve mental health services in the coming year and beyond. Rotary ought to be known as an organization that takes care of its members as well as its communities. Again, tomorrow we'll spend a fair bit more time focused on this area. In support of that, what I'm going to have on our district committee, we have a district well, health, mental health and wellness chair. But in each country, we'll be appointing a country mental health and wellness advisor. Again, this person doesn't necessarily have to have a mental health or wellness background, but really what that person is going to be is the champion of this uh, area of focus in each of our countries, but more so that person is going to assist me as I come in to visit your countries in helping us to gather some statistics, some uh, resource information, what resources are available for mental health and wellness in, in your specific country, so that when I come to talk to your country's uh, clubs or when I come to speak to the civic leadership of your countries, I'm speaking from uh, not my facts from the Cayman Islands, but I'm speaking for your country and helping to elevate the awareness of this issue in your own countries using statistics and facts from your countries. Again, we'll talk a bit more about this tomorrow. Themes. I'm just going to skip real fast uh, through this one, but 
over the years, governors have had themes. So we've seen many years ago, Haiti, grow stronger, serve better, was uh, one of the themes uh, the district governor had. Um, I'm trying to do two clickers at once, and it's just not working, people. Um, so here I am with this one. Uh, who is this? Is this somebody called Patrick, I believe? Patrick the Dees one? <laughs> um, but really the point I'm wanting to make is that while different president, uh, sorry, district governors have had themes, this year, of course, we know infinite possibilities, I've chosen not to have a specific theme. I have chosen to work and amplify create hope in the world. I feel like it's extremely powerful. I feel like it's a message that needs to be amplified and delivered across our country. There will not be a specific theme that I'm going to be running with, and I hope you can understand the reasoning why, and it's also no fault. I know Dominique may have a theme, uh, governors in the future may have a, a, a personal theme, but for me personally, I thought it was important just to amplify Gordon's message. That said, we do have a district pin. And uh, what I'd like to just really quickly say about that district pin, if I can get back to there, it is really, really tough when you're trying to design a district pin to get all the elements in it that you want to highlight. Obviously, as you drive around St. Croix, you see the windmills, you see uh, it's a dominant feature on, on the district pin this year. We don't have windmills in Cayman because we don't have any hills to create that. But, what we've got, what you're going to see there, the three stars in the top right-hand side representing the three Cayman Islands. Um, if you look at our coat of arms, it includes that blue wave motif, and the top field is also in red, so we've picked that up. Everybody knows Cayman for its beaches, palm trees, so that's on there. And of course, the emblem that binds us all together, the Rotary International emblem, as well as our district emblem, which includes the 10 stars representing the 10 countries of our district. So we try to put some thought into that, and that is our pin for the year. And the next thing, again, this won't work because videos are not playing, so on some levels it'll spare you having to listen to all of this. But our district theme song, Deborah had a whole new world, and it certainly wasn't a whole new world. Um, but what is a whole, once the whole new world is created, what do you need now? Well, a wonderful world needs wonderful, beautiful people, of course. So therefore, we have, I'm going to totally fill on this, here we go. spare you my thing, my singing. Um, <laughs> but I, there's a couple of phrases in there that I think are really appropriate. And, and quite honestly, if you've never been on the track towards district governor, you've never had the weight of trying to choose a song that you're probably going to have played at every time you go to everything. And uh, I did not even know this was a thing until last year when Tina turned to me and goes, you know we're going to have to choose a song. <laughs> um, but, Whole New World was Deborah's Beautiful World, Beautiful People. Um, two lines really stand out for me in there. I'm not going to play the thing so you can hear it, but take a look at this world and the state that it's in today. I'm sure you will agree we can make it a better way. I know we can do that as a Rotary. Another one, man and woman, boy and girl, let us try to give a helping hand. That's what we do. We give helping hand. We do it through the work you do in your club, with your own members, in your communities, and through the foundation, which we're on track to get back involved on the foundation, we do it in our countries, and it's just a fantastic thing. Very quickly, because I know I'm way overdue now, um, Club Challenge. And this information has not been publicized yet, there's still some final edits to do, and I know there's no way you can read all of this, so don't bother. Um, but We've taken the club challenges that Deborah had for this past year, and they're largely 
similar. In a few areas, what we've done is we've put some focus areas on the mental health and mental wellness. Uh, one other small but very subtle change was that there was a, uh, uh, one of the mandatory items was the 25, I think it was, $25 average per person in your club foundation giving. The problem with that is you don't qualify for district grants unless your club is doing an average of $26.5. Um, so we've adjusted that, um, little small things like this. So this will be emailed to all presidents. Um, and I'll just very quickly run through it um, into the next one. So go back one, okay? Oh, you're trying to actually, I, I will be emailing this, so this really is. Oh, people are taking photographs. <laughs> A much better version will be coming your way. Um, Ruby Award, and then of course a Diamond Award. Really, I want every club ought to get the, the Gold Standard Award. That should be your baseline of operations. The others are achievable. We don't want to make this thing so hard that you don't go for it. I'm looking forward to giving out as many of these Diamond Awards as I can get FedEx to send to the Cayman Islands next year. The other item to talk about is the monthly challenge. Again, what we've done is uh, taken most of the monthly challenge items that we would have had this past year and we've either used them or we've edited them slightly and we've also thrown in some elements of um, working around mental health and wellness. I also though have the very good fortune to have uh, an immediate past president of Sunrise Club in the Cayman Islands as my um, district secretary, as well as the HR manager for our company is a current president, so I'm able to get almost real-time feedback on what it's like working with these club challenges and the DG um, challenge. And one of the items of feedback is we know that some of your clubs may have, for example, a, a health activity that is not in the month that necessarily coincides with the health activity DG award, and we don't want you to have to change your schedule, so what we've thrown in on their advice is a wild card. So a wild card, you can, you can use that in place of a month where maybe you've got something else. Um, so we'll explain a bit more about that, but we're trying to listen to the feedback that we're getting from some of the clubs that we're trying to shoehorn perhaps a, uh, a mental, uh, sorry, a wellness activity in a month where they have a huge mental, uh, sorry, a huge health activity in uh, October but the award is for December or January, and we're just trying to acknowledge that. We don't want you to have to uh, keep adding uh, new requirements and make life difficult for you. That is it. I do apologize for the sound. We'll make sure that works out for the next plenaries. Um, I thank you so much for your time. We've got Vance, who is going to redirect us. I think we'll skip the next video, Vance, just to get us back on track time-wise. Uh, there is a video on the action plan. We'll find some time to either get that out to you in another plenary, or what we'll do is we'll make sure that you're emailed a, a, a link to that. But I think it's important now that we get on track with, with pets and gain back some time there. So thank you very much.